Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Academic Resource Center's Academic Success webinar series and happy start of the spring semester. Um, I hope everyone had a wonderful finish to their fall semester um, and is happy to be back on campus, back on the hilltop, um, and ready to go. Um, I am Ashley Bray. I'm the Disability and Learning Skills Advisor for the School of Continuing Studies. I am here with my colleague who I'll let introduce herself. Hi, everyone. I'm Annie Balot. I'm the Learning Skills Specialist on Main Campus. So, as always, um, you can find out more information about ARC events and resources and upcoming webinars if you follow us on Facebook or Instagram. Our handles are ARC at, at ARC Georgetown for Facebook and at ARC under slash Georgetown for Instagram. All right. So, as you remember, we've done webinars in the fall semester as well, and they are, are all archived on our website. It's actually is pulling up now. Um, so it's underneath the Academic Success Webinar Series tab on the left-hand side, and then you can see every webinar that we did in the fall semester. It's linked to our YouTube page, so you can go um, click on the webinar that is most relevant to, the, to your needs at that time. Um, watch the webinar, let us know if you have any questions, but everything is archived so that it is easily accessible for you. You can also see the spring schedule down at the bottom as well. Um, so again, right now we're doing today's our navigating campus resources topic, but you can see what other topics we have moving forward through the spring semester. As Ashley was showing you, on the left-hand side, you can see a bunch of other academic support options like academic resources, has a lot of different handouts, downloadable handouts that you can um, print off and use at your disposal. Um, and a lot of good information is on that website. So feel free to download whatever you feel would be helpful for you and let us know if you have any questions. All right, like I mentioned too, here is our spring semester schedule. Um, so we are doing webinars about every two weeks. So you can see our next webinar is gonna be getting to know helpful apps. The next one will be classroom engagement. Then we'll talk about um, the writing lab and the writing center on main campus as well as SES. We have a webinar on public speaking, so it's some good tips and tricks for that, how to navigate group work, and then always, we love some finals prep at the end of the semester um, to really get you developing a realistic study plan. Okay, so um, to start us off uh, with the spring semester, we just wanted to have a little bit of a conversation around uh, campus resources. Um, at this point, you know, you guys are all returning from a fall semester, but I always think it's a good refresher, um, especially maybe highlighting some resources um, that might help you in kind of academic areas of needs as we move into the spring semester and really help you intentionally set up some great study habits and academic habits. Um, so we did this in a little bit of a different format um, where we'll kind of give you a mock student some information about them, um, maybe kind of a question of what their next step should be, and then talk about the resources that might be most appropriate. So our first uh, made-up student is Josh Adams. He's a sophomore. He's an environmental and biology major. He's doing a minor in chemistry, and he's a tennis player. So like many of you, a very full course load, very full um, extracurricular coursework as well. Um, so he's an intelligent, hardworking sophomore who has to balance time between science classes and tennis. Um, I know for a lot of our student athletes that that balance can be challenging. Um, so this semester, Josh decides he wants to take an uh, economics class because he has an interest in economics. Um, and so he's enrolled in a microeconomics class. And after about three weeks, so about this point in the semester, Josh realizes that he has no clue of what the price elasticity of demand is. Yeah, me either, Josh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so what should he do? Um, so we've identified some campus resources. First, if Google doesn't help, which is always my first option, um, I think one of the best things to do is contact your professor or TA to schedule a meeting. Um, I know we harp on this a lot here at the Academic Resource Center, and you've probably heard it in our past webinars. Um, your professors and TAs are there to help you um, outside of your class time. 
they have office hours for a reason, and I think the general feedback from most faculty is that they wish that you all would utilize those office hours more. Um, I think not only is it great for you to go to office hours and have all your questions answered and really make sure you're understanding the material, but it also kind of gives you um, a chance to get to know your professor a little bit better, um, connect on maybe some shared interests, and I think that can always help you later on in the class. So use those office hours to contact your TA. I think that's the first step. Um, the second suggestion is form a study group with classmates. Um, I think this is especially relevant for these econ and finance classes. Um, I think we see a lot of students come in through our office who might be struggling a little bit or just kind of needing someone to talk through these hard concepts um, and have a little help on that. And uh, utilizing your classmates and your peers to form study groups, maybe um, it's something that you do once a week. Maybe it's not something once a week, maybe it's every other week, whatever works for you and your peers. Um, but this way you guys can kind of navigate those groups, meet as needed, talk through concepts, um, and just kind of have a check and understanding. And I think it also provides some assurance when um, you realize there's other students in the classroom who might be struggling through the same things, um, and you guys can talk about that. I think the biggest resources that we want to highlight here for Josh is to contact the Department of Econ for tutoring schedule. So the Department of Econ does tutoring. Um, you can go to their website or be in contact with them via email or call or stop in and visit um, and talk about your tutoring options. Um, they're a great resource, an underutilized resource on campus, so make sure to check them out if you are an econ major or happen to be taking an econ class. Wonderful. Okay, moving on. So Pavardi is our next student. So she's a freshman, another econ major. Um, she's minoring in mathematics, mathematics, and she's an international student from India. Um, so Pavardi just moved from India to pursue her undergraduate degree. She's done all of her initial schooling in India, and she's taking her first English class here in her first semester, which a lot of you can relate to. Her first assignment is writing an essay with appropriate citations. And she's having a little trouble writing the essay with the citations that her professor has requested. So her question is, what should she do in this scenario? All right, so scheduling an appointment with the Writing Center on main campus and or if you are at SES, scheduling an appointment with the Writing Lab is our main recommendation. You can see the links that are listed on the website. Um, you can make an online appointment, easy. Go figure out what works with your schedule, sign on, log on, find an appointment time that works for you. Same with the Writing Lab at SES. So really accessible for students. It, you can make it work with your schedule. Um, I recommend when students go create or make an appointment with the Writing Lab is to have some sort of product to use during your appointment with a tutor in the writing center. Um, so don't just show up and say, hey, this is what I have to do, now what? Come up with some outline, come up with some brainstorm ideas so that once you get to that appointment, you can actually utilize the tutor's knowledge and expertise to really help um, kind of guide you through the writing process. So they're definitely not going to write the, write the paper for you, yeah. right? Yeah, so as you can see, they can help with general steps for the writing process, pre-writing, so that brainstorming, doing that outlining piece, um, definitely talking about what types of citations are appropriate, how to do a correct bibliography, how to do a lit review. So a lot of good resources and a lot of good strategies available at the Writing Center. And I just wanted to highlight for SES students, um, they've done a really, I think, awesome series of workshops and webinars this semester um, where you can either take it on site um, or virtual as you can see here and you can register for both. Um, as we mentioned earlier in our webinar talking about upcoming ARC events, we are actually hosting a webinar with the Writing Center on March 13th. Um, and we're going to have um, Charlotte from the Writing Lab at SCF come in and specifically answer all of your all's questions about citations that you can send in ahead of time or ask during the webinar. And it's going to be interactive, so stay tuned for that as well. All right, so our next student, Francesca, is a senior, so last semester on campus, ready to be done. Um, and she's majoring in Chinese and economics. Economics is 
apparently a theme this webinar. Um, so it's her last under, year of her undergrad program at Georgetown, and she's taking an intermediate level Chinese course, which is quite difficult for a non-native speaker. Um, she has several essays to summarize in Chinese, but can barely get past one, and extremely stressed because the assignment is due next week. And I'm sure that's something that um, you guys who are taking foreign language classes can relate to. Um, furthermore, she plans to pursue graduate studies in economics, so she has two upper level math classes. Ugh. Um, while she understands most of the homework assigned, she simply can't solve two questions. So what should Francesca do? Okay, so for the first, um, regarding um, her Chinese class, request a foreign language tutor through the ARC, our office. Um, we provide foreign language tutors um, for individuals in the beginning to the intermediate level two coursework. Um, and as you can see here, we've linked to our website um, that you can start requesting tutors January 24th through March 19th. Um, and then we provide some step-by-step -step instructions on how to request a tutor and what qualifications are needed. Okay. For um, her math questions, um, the Mathematics Assistance Center can help you. Um, and this is for individuals who are in advanced or linear algebra, calculus one or two, analysis one, multivariable calc, differential equations, probability, and stats. Um, and they have the Math Center Assistance Center open Sunday through Thursdays from 6 to 10 p.m. Um, in St. Mary's G37. And we've also included the website here. There it goes. Um, that we have information um, directed towards them with some more information about where St. Mary's is. Um, and a note, you'll need go-card access on Sundays and all days during the weeks after 8, 8 p.m. So make sure you bring your go-card if you go visit the Math Assistance Center. All right. So our next student profile is Karen Alexander. She is a freshman. She's an undecided major, not sure what her minor is. So Karen just started her undergraduate program in the college and is confused about what she wants to do, which I think a lot of people can relate to. So she simply does not know how to tackle college and is extremely nervous about what to expect and how to, how to go about to ensure a successful college career. All right, so what can Karen do? First step, meet with either myself or Ashley as the learning skills specialist on main campus in the SES to discuss certain study habits and effective strategies, how to manage course load. A lot of students that we talk with, um, especially freshmen or incoming students, are having trouble managing the workload or the reading load coming from high school or coming from a different university. So let's have a conversation. We've got a lot of good strategies and tips for you on how to manage that workload to make sure you are using your time efficiently, you're creating an effective study schedule, and you are keeping on track with your reading and not feeling like you're falling behind. So the information for both on campus, uh, ARC, as well as the SES campus is listed on the slide. You can also email arc at georgetown.edu or arc.ses at georgetown.edu with any questions you may have. Um, it, the information will be directed to either Ashley and I. So that's definitely the first step. Don't hesitate to talk with us. It's definitely some that's part of our job. We love having those conversations with students, so don't hesitate to reach out. The second suggestion is to tune in to the ARC's Academic Success Webinar Series, which you are doing right now. So like we talked about before, we have tons of resources on our website, including all of our archived webinars from the fall semester, and our spring semester schedule is also up on the website. So tune in, see if there's some information that could be valuable. Um, if you're up late at night and you're not sure, you know, some strategies on time management and you can't make an appointment with Ashley or I at 2 a.m., maybe tune into our time management webinar and see what types of strategies and tips could be of help to you. But also get some sleep. <laughs> and also get some sleep. And then schedule an appointment with us the next day. Yes. Um, third suggestion is to meet with your academic dean. If you're really not sure about your degree progress, you're not sure about what program and kind of study fits your interest, make sure that you're in contact with your academic dean. They are going to be the best support system for you, one of the main support systems. So make sure that you know their name, know where their office is, have their contact information, and make sure you set up an appointment as soon as you can. And then the last suggestion is to schedule an appointment with CAP, so another really good resource on campus 
um, to make sure that you are having conversations. If you are feeling anxious or if you're feeling super overwhelmed by the workload, make sure that you are um, using our psychologists and psychiatrists on campus to really help kind of navigate those conversations and dig deep, kind of figure out the root of those issues and explore that so that you can be successful here at Georgetown. Great. So our last student is Alex Lopez. Um, he's a master's student in the SIN, the Sports Industry Management Program. Um, he's a student veteran and he works full time, which is not uncommon for many of our students here going and pursuing graduate degrees. Um, so he works at a local radio station covering DC sports, um, and he's also receiving GEI benefits and has questions about the certification process. Um, what should, who should Alex talk to? Um, my main recommendation is get in contact with the Veterans Office. Um, they're located over in the car barn, um, and we've included their contact email um, as well as their phone number. It's veteranservices at georgetown.edu as well as the website. Um, they have amazing staff over there who can certify your benefits if you're on a GI Bill or part of the Yellow Ribbon Project um, and can talk you through that process because I know um, with the VA, it can get very, very confusing. Um, and so make sure you're in contact with them at the beginning of the semester to have them answer any questions that you may have. Um, but also wanted to highlight a few of campus military connected organizations. Um, there's GUSPA, which is the Student Veterans Association, the Big Data Military Association, um, the Med Military Medicine Interest Group, um, Military Law Society, and Hoya Batun, ROTC. Um, so if you are a student veteran um, and you want to get involved, um, go check out these resources on campus. Um, some great groups and some great work that our student vets are doing. Great. So just some other campus resources we want to highlight as we near the end of this webinar. So Student Health Center, Pretty popular place, I would say, right now as we're entering flu season, a lot of colds coming on with our students. Make sure you're taking care of yourself. If you're feeling sick or anything, make sure you go into schedule an appointment with Student Health Center. Get it taken care of so that you can stay on top of your academics and don't fall behind. Um, the nursing school, so NHS academic support also offers tutoring for certain courses. Talk with your academic dean, talk with your professors see what types of academic support and tutoring is available through um, the School of Nursing. Also, the Cauley Career Education Center, if you're having some um, questions on internships or job exploration or career exploration, definitely make an appointment with the Cauley Career Education Center to tap into those resources um, and see what great advice those staff members have. And I would recommend if you are a senior, um, and graduation is right around the corner in May and you're still searching for jobs, um, you might want to be on the lookout with uh, job fairs coming up because I know they host a lot of those into the spring semester, have recruiters on campus, so make sure you stay connected with them in that way to look for potential job or like Amy said, internship opportunities. Yep, and our university libraries um, on main campus, that's where the Writing Center is located. Um, it's located in Lao, but there are a lot of good reference librarians there that can help you do research and can conduct research on certain projects or writing essays or anything that you may have. So don't be afraid to utilize our libraries, especially on main campus as well. And at SES, um, it is down on the bottom level. Um, it's the Fish Bowl, and they are open in the evening from I think four to nine, um, and you can make a um, consultation appointment with the librarian, and, um, and they can also help you get books or articles from main campus, um, so you're not hopping back and forth. And of course, campus ministry, another campus resource that we wanna highlight. Um, so definitely take some time, look at the resources on campus, and don't be afraid to ask for help. Great. Um, so if anyone has any questions, you can chat them into the chat box, um, and Annie and I will pick a couple of questions to look over. Um, so I'll give everyone a couple of minutes um, to look, type in those questions, and we'll answer.
All right, so we had one question come in. So it's regarding research. Um, so the student asked if they have a research project coming up and they're really not sure what resources to use or where to go. So this is like their major first research project here at the university in their undergraduate career um, and they're really just not sure what to do. Yeah, great question. Um, so this is where I would recommend being in contact with the library. So if you're here on the main campus, um, go into Lau. Um, if you're at SCS, make an appointment with uh, Megan Hunt, the SCS librarian. Um, they have amazing research guides based on very specific topics. Um, and the librarians and um, have a lot of knowledge on how to navigate those guides and really narrow down what you're looking for. Um, and so that's the best place to start. Um, I know you can make those, like we just showed you, you can make those appointments online. Um, and I think it's great to be really proactive, um, especially if you know you have a big project coming up. Research does take a lot of time. Um, so start that process as soon as you can. Make an appointment because they fill up really quickly. Um, and they'll be able to give you the specific resource guides based on your industry um, and really talk you through um, how to use those and how to really incorporate that research into your project. Wonderful. All right, the second question that came in is a student said they had accommodations in high school, they had a 504 plan. They didn't think that they needed any additional assistance last semester. Now it's the spring semester and they're asking what should they do? Yeah, so that's where we come in, um, the Academic Resource Center. So I think one of the things, if we can get back to our website here, is um, we provide academic accommodations to students with disabilities under the American Disability. Americans with Disabilities Act and Section 504 of the Rehab Act of 1973. Um, so we do have a process in place if you want to um, apply for an accommodation. Um, if you go onto our website under Disability Support, you'll see uh, this tab for Documentation Guidelines and Accommodation Process. If you click on this, um, I think it gives you a really great outline of what to expect from the process. Um, and then we have breakdowns of documentation guidelines based on specific medical conditions. So if you had a learning disability, you would click here. Um, maybe you have chronic migraines, that's what you would click here for. Um, so take some time, review this, review the documentation guidelines. But the first step in that process um, would be submitting the appropriate documentation outlined on our website um, and sending an email to one of the ARC administrators. So um, if you're on main campus, you would either be working with Dr. Hollihan or um, Ms. Amy Mollark, our associate director. Um, if you're a school's continuing studies student, you would be working with me. Um, and you can be in contact with other questions um, by emailing us at arc at georgetown.edu or at SES, ARC underscore SES at georgetown.edu. Um, so that's the best way to start that process, but um, please be in contact with us. Great, thanks for that. Awesome. So I think that's it on questions for today. Um, we just wanted to slowly ease back in um, to our webinar series um, and make sure that you guys were utilizing all the great resources that we have here on campus. Um, as always, we have our webinar feedback form that you can um, follow this link, http colon backslash backslash tinyurl.com backslash ARC webinar feedback. Provide some feedback, it can be anonymous if you want. Um, and also share suggestions for maybe upcoming webinars or topics that you would like to see covered. Um, and then make sure you join us for our next webinar, which will be Thursday, February 8th at 12 noon, um, same Zoom link. And as always, we're gonna archive these on our website the next day. Um, we'll be talking about getting to know helpful apps. Um, so make sure you have your tablets or phones ready so it's really an interactive webinar. You can be downloading them. Um, we'll talk about apps for time management, apps to help you with uh, distraction-free environments, things like that. Um, so again, thank you all for joining us and we hope to see you on Thursday, February 8th at 12 noon. Um, and have a great rest of your day.